This is quite an iconic car. But it did set a trend how sports cars should be prepared and should be run. My name is David Hobbs. I was a professional racing driver from 1959 to 1990. This car was a privateer car. It was owned by Roger Penske and Dirk F. White. If you're going to have a private entrant, Roger Penske's your boy. The 512S is much more rounded shape. And the 512M has got much straighter size. It's much squarer. It has a shorter tail, but uh, with the big wing, it has more downforce than the 512S. It's a little bit lighter, mainly because the bodywork is shorter, so there's less of it. People are starting to think more aerodynamically. I mean, aerodynamics hadn't meant a thing until the early 70s. Mark Donahue was driving for Roger Penske, and he and I had some pretty good races. At the end of the 1970 season, Roger Penske called me up, and he laid out a plan which sounded pretty good to me, to drive four races in the 512 with Mark, the Daytona 24, the Sebring 12 hour, the Mon 24, and the Watkins Glen 6 hour. Well, my first impression, I saw it in the garage in Pennsylvania, and it looked pretty good. And off it went to Sebring and went out and did some testing, did some laps. It was a lovely car to drive. It had terrific power uh, and a very smooth engine. But the V12 just sounds absolutely fantastic. to drive the car, I was a bit surprised to find out that the engine, in fact, had been rebuilt by Traco out in California. I had driven the GT40s, which were very easy to drive. This car wasn't quite as easy to drive, but it was a bit of a step up in performance. Obviously, it was a lot quicker than the GT40. We were doing round about 206, 208 when we hit NASCAR turn three. And it was a bit unnerving the first time, but uh, you kind of got used to it. The handling, of course, in those days, you know, we had such wide tires that it certainly helped the mechanical grip. The only trouble was I was about three or four inches taller than Mark, and my head had a nasty habit of hitting on the roof, especially on bumpy tracks, like Sebring. I had my head on the side, and I used to have to slump down the seat. It had that funny rear view mirror on the, on the roof. Um, Mark thought it'd be a good idea to cut a hole in the roof and you could look at the rear view by looking through the hole in the roof, which for him was all right. For me, it wasn't too good because I was up another couple of inches of him, so I <laughs> couldn't see the mirror very well. Well, when we appeared in 1971 with this car, at Daytona. This was a, a dream team because you had Roger Penske owning and running it. You had John Woodard in the pits, who was a terrific mechanic. Mark Donahue was a very, very well-known American driver. And I was already known as a pretty good driver. Woody and the gang had done a fantastic job on this car. And all the, the sills where the fuel tank were all beautifully painted and everything was polished, highly polished. And of course, the Europeans just weren't into that sort of thing then. So they all said, oh yeah, American spit and polish, yeah, 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 let's see how it goes out on the track. Then they saw how Roger ran the pits, how his crew were uniformed, how the, how the car was prepared, and of course, how fast it was.
our first race of the day, 224 hours, in uh, 1971. And we were on the pole in the, down at turn three and four. Vic Elford had spun a Porsche 917, and uh, Mark eased up because of the dust. A Porsche uh, 911 ran into him and caused quite a bit of bodywork damage. We still came third, so it was a pretty magnificent effort. Then just a few weeks later, the Sebring 12 hour, we were leading the race. Mark had an altercation with Pedro Rodriguez, the lead driver for the Porsche team. He says that Pedro Rodriguez ran into him about three miles from the pits. And by the time he got back, the rear tire had shredded. Again, the Penske team did a fantastic job, put it all together again, and I think we finished 10th. Then our final event was the um, Watkins Len 6 hour. And again, we were on the pole. 45 minutes into the race, the uh, left front steering post broke and we were out. We were regarded as absolute front runners, there's no doubt about it. And we were incredibly unlucky not to win those races. But I think it really opened a lot of people's eyes and, and set new standards, which then raised their game a lot. <laughs>